boys and girls, today I'm going to read a book to you that's very popular in Texas, and um, I think all of you uh, have probably heard it by now. It's called The Legend of the Blue Bonnet, and it's actually a very old Texas tale, but it's retold and illustrated by Tommy DePaola. That's the cover of the book. It is AR testable. Great spirits, the land is dying. Your people are dying too. The long line of dancers sang. Tell us what we have done to anger you. End this drought, save your people. Tell us what we must do so that you will send rain. Rain that will bring back life. For three days, the dancers danced to the sound of the drums, and for three days, the people called Comanche watched and waited. And even though the hard winter was over, no healing rains came. Drought and famine are hardest on the very young and the very old. Among the few children left was a small girl named She Who Is Alone. She sat by herself watching the dancers. In her lap was a doll made of buckskin, a warrior doll. The eyes, nose, and mouth were painted on with the juices of berries. It wore beaded leggings and a belt of polished bone. On its head were brilliant blue feathers from the bird who cries, J, J, J. She loved her doll very, very much. Soon, she who is alone said to her doll, the shaman will go off alone to the top of the hill to listen for the words of the great spirits. Then we will know what to do so that once more the rains will come and the earth will be green and alive. The buffalo will be plenty and the people will be rich again. As she talked, she thought of the mother who made the doll, of the father who brought the blue feathers. She thought of the grandfather and the grandmother that she had never known. They were all like shadows. It seemed long ago that they had died from the famine. The people had named her and cared for her. The warrior doll was the only thing that she had left from those distant days. The sun is setting, the runner called as he ran through the camp. The shaman is returning. The people gathered in a circle and the shaman spoke. I have heard the words of the great spirit, he said. The people have become selfish. For years they've just taken from the earth without giving anything back. The great spirit say that the people must make a sacrifice. We must make a burnt offering of the most valued possession among us. The ashes of this offering shall then be scattered to the four points of the earth the home of the winds. And when this sacrifice is made, drought and famine will cease. Life will be restored to the earth and the people. The people sang a song of thanks to the great spirits for telling them what they must do. I'm sure it's not my new bow that the great spirits want, a warrior said. Or my special blanket, a woman added as everyone went to their teepees to think and think over what the great spirits had asked. Everyone, that is, except for she who is alone. She held her doll tightly to her heart. You, she said, looking at her doll, you are more, my most valued possession. It's you that the great spirits want, and she knew what she must do. As the council fires died out, and the teepee flaps began to close, the small girl returned to the teepee where she slept to wait. The night outside was still, except for the distant sound of the bird with the red wings. Soon everyone in the teepee was asleep, except she who is alone. Under the ashes of the teepee fire, with one stick that still glowed, and she took it gently and quietly crept out into the night. She ran to the place on top of the hill where the great spirits had spoken to the shaman. Stars filled the sky, but there was no moon. 
Oh, great spirits, she who was alone said, here is my warrior doll. It is the only thing I have from my family who died of famine. It is my most valued possession. Please accept it. Then gathering twigs, she started a fire with the glowing fire stick. The small girl watched as the twigs began to catch and burn. She thought of her grandmother and grandfather, her mother and father, and all the people, their suffering, their hunger, and before she could change her mind, she thrust the doll into the fire. She watched until the flames died down and the ashes had grown cold. Then, scooping up a handful, she who was alone scattered the ashes to the home of the winds, the north and the east and the south and the west. And there she fell asleep until the first light of the morning sun woke her. She looked out over the hill and stretching out from all sides where the, ash, where the ashes had fallen, the ground was covered with flowers, beautiful flowers, as blue as the feathers of the hair, as blue as the feathers in the hair of her doll, as blue as the feathers of the bird who calls, J, J, J. When the people came out of their teepees, they could scarcely believe their eyes. They gathered on the hill with she who was alone to look at the miraculous sight. There was no doubt about it. The flowers were a sign of forgiveness from the great spirits. And the people sang and danced their thanks to the great spirits. And a warm rain began to fall and the land began to live again. From that day on, the little girl was known by a different name, one who dearly loved her people. And every spring, the great spirits remember the sacrifice of the little girl and fill the hills and valleys of the land that we now call Texas with beautiful flowers, even to this very day. The end. Now take the test.